You can find research that's going to support what you have to say. But this is so critical and so vital that you move from, I have this idea, right? Hey, Bob, I have this idea. I think I can save you money. I think I can solve this problem. Bob's going to push back to a third party. Hey, Bob, you know, I was working with a similar client to you guys out of uh, Texarkana yesterday. And, you know, it's interesting. We had discovered that about 17% of their marketing spend was going out to customers that would never be customers at all. And I was curious uh, with the changes in how Meta and Google are doing their targeting, how you guys are, are dealing with that, call it 17 to 20% in wasted spend. How are you guys tackling that? You're gonna find the conversation is much more open. As I say all the time at Easton University, you guys, all of the stuff that we teach will work in your personal life. Let me give you a, a personal life example of this. As a salesperson, if I reach out to Bob and say that sales coaching can increase his ability to close deals by seven times, Bob's likelihood, because he's afraid, because he's a burn victim, he's tried something in the past, because he doesn't want to change, Bob's likelihood is exponentially greater that Bob is going to go, not interested, I'm all set, I'm all good, no thank you, bye, if I bring the idea up to Bob, than if I said something like, you know, I was just given a keynote at an event in San Diego and, and a number of the people in the audience came up to me and what they said was, you know, sales has really changed because customers today with social media, uh, they've got a lot more access to information and they've got more choices than ever before. So kind of that old school way of selling where, you know, your job was just to provide the information, put out a quote and hope for the best just really isn't working. And I, I was curious if that's what you're seeing at all uh, with your clients. Now I could change that and say, you know, I was curious to see how you guys are handling that, which would be a better way. Now I said, this kind of stuff works in your personal life. Imagine if you were married and you met your spouse for a glass of wine in the afternoon and said, Hey, I know we've been arguing about a lot of stuff and I've got some ideas on how we can improve our marriage, improve our relationship and fix things so that we're not arguing. You probably just walked into an argument, right? But notice if you had the same problem, the same arguments in your marriage, you met your spouse for a glass of wine and said, oh man, so great hanging out with you. Hey, can you believe when we were at that party last night, can you believe how Terry and Steve we're just going back and forth with each other, just nitpicking and nitpicking. Oh my God, I noticed that too. I thought Steve was going to punch Terry. I know, right? God, I, I, I want to make sure that we never end up like that. Like, that is horrible. I know, right? I would just die if I was in a relationship. You know, one of the things that I was thinking, you know, if Terry and Steve just on a weekly basis set some time where the two of them could have wine together, man, they could probably work through a lot of their stuff and have a, I, yeah, that you should, you should recommend. You know, what if we did something like that every week? Yeah, that's, you know what, that's not such a bad idea. I was just thinking about that. We were arguing about the kids yesterday and you always being late to their practices and sporting events. Man, I really wanted to talk. Yes, we need to make sure that we don't end up like Terry and Steve. In your personal life, if you try and get somebody to do something or see the world through your lens, your point of view, you're inherently going to get pushed back. This is why people talk smack about other people. Because it's easier for us to both be, instead of us going directly, mano e mano, I've got an idea, not a good idea, but have you tried this? No, that doesn't work. Don't call me back again. For us to both look at an independent third source. And now we're both kind of pointing at the problem. Look at, man, wasn't that embarrassing how Terry and Steve were yelling at each other? You know, one of the things that we're seeing with a lot of CPAs is they're not getting paid for the work that they're doing. Yeah, I can imagine that, right? I've kind of ran into that myself. And now the door is wide open for a much, much better conversation.